Hello and welcome to the seventh video in the series. In the last video we took a look at the linked list and memory node. Um, so following on from that we'll take a look at the monoflop, noise um, and also time. Um, just because time is going to feed into this monoflop uh, and we'll cover this um, just so we won't cover it later on as well. Um, we've got, I mean if you take a look at this, we've got some uh, other nodes as well, like a really simple math uh, multiply node here. Um, a box, um, we've got three different text uh, objects here, just so we can read some outputs. Um, and then moving on later on into the um, Python part, I'm just, I'm, I'm not going to create an example which is kind of based on what we've already got here. The example is going to be based on um, just creating like a blank two dimensional um, list. So, like how we have a, a matrix form. So, we have a matrix form which is, um, which we've got like vectors. So, we've got vector one, two, three, um, and the offset. Um, and we've got all these kind of they're linked into a list. So the last time we read those out, there was like looked like something like this in the list. Um, and what we're going to do is <clears throat> create our own kind of blank list using um, two different for loops. Um, and then that way we've got once we've got that um, list or two dimensional list set up, we can drive like the matrix data into that, store it, change it. Um, and export it out again, so it's kind of a, a really good thing to learn. So let's just jump straight into um, this Expresso. Um, if we take a look at this, we've got the monoflop node here, um, and this node is it. It acts like a, a time switch. So at the moment we've got time. So I mean, could, because we're covering time, we'll just take a look at this. We've got um, the standard time. That's um, being fed out of this. Now time um, reads as a value between um, 0 and 1. So you can see up here we've got the frame number and down here we've got the current time that's being read out of here. So from 0, both of 0 and then if we go to 25 frames well actually it's being read at 30 frames I think this one. So you can see at 30 frames this goes to 1. So it's 60 frames, so 30 frames um, a second, 60 frames for the next second, and you can kind of see the relationship between these two. And then with this text object, all we've got is, all I've done with this is, this is just being fed from the output of the monoflop um, into this, just to kind of show us a true and false state. Um, we So when this is true, this runs through this noise node here. So the noise node creates a, or generates like a, um, a random value. Um, and we've just multiplied to that value just to amplify um, the position of this. And you can see if I hit play on this um, and I trigger this, so I could trigger this by selecting this on the node. Um, but all I've done here is just drag this into the viewport just so we've, this is more accessible. So I can trigger this by, if I hit this, we've set it to true and um, you can see the box moving so the box essentially again is um, this noise here being driven and then multiply so I think we multiplied that by 30 um, and that just runs into the position data of that cube there. You can see I just triggered that by accident as well. Um, so again, we'll play that through, and you can see true. Oh, actually, I've just broken that connection there. So you can see it's true, it's moving. You kind of get that variation in position on all the axes, um, and then if I just hit this, there should be a delay. So yeah, so we've got a 25 second, 25 frame delay um, on this. So immediately as soon as I set it to true, it'll trigger straight away. It's just on the full state we have that delay. So again, hit it, and then there's that delay. So just to exaggerate that just a little bit further, if we go to the monoflop and change this to 50, and then hit play, we can go true state, so false, yeah, and you can see how that 
we had that 50 second, 50 frame um, delay on this. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much all that does. Um, I'm sure you'll find some uh, some uses for this. Um, you can create like all kind of delays that with the trigger. You can set some conditions. So you know maybe you have a noise that runs into this trigger. Um, if the noise goes over a certain value, maybe that triggers the the switch to switch off. Um, or or to be true. Um, so. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it with uh, monoflop. Um, we'll just take a, another look at noise. So with noise, you've got all the um, parameters that you thought you'd probably have. So scale, it's obviously the the, the size. Um, so one of the, one of the ways you can I I treat noise is imagine this is if you got like a black and white image, it's just like a two D noise. Scale is just physically like scaling that up. So the noise will be kind of like smoother and less less kind of um irregular in in just one place it's kind of wide it just makes a wider spread um frequency will mean like how many times this is happening a second so the box will shape uh, uh, shake around and vibrate much faster and then seed is your random seed value so at the moment it's set to zero and if we were to like link this to another box we get exactly the same random value out of this um, but if we duplicate noise uh, and we change the seed value we'll get a slightly different randomization um, from this so that's all that does um, click on node we've got positive only so you can see if I check this box we should it should only move in one direction um, okay so so it's true now you can see it's moving kind of at that point and then if we set it to or uncheck positive only you can see it's moving further because at that point when we check positive only it's going to run between like zero and one or whichever value it runs up to um, if we uncheck this it'll run to like minus values and plus values and just kind of fluctuate up and down in between both got we've got lots of different noise noise types so you know you can pick and choose whatever kind of noise suits you and that's covered noise um, the math uh, we'll leave that for now um, and then time we'll just take a look at this as well um, and just see what else we've got on here so and generally most of the time I'll probably just use the frame so just export the current frame just because it makes the maths a lot easier to work with um, rather than working with these decimals um, and generally I probably will have like some kind of range mapper or multiplier in between the export of this and into the next node but you've got like all these all these other options in here as well so you can export the frames per second um, previous so I mean if you want to find out exactly what all these do just select the node um, and then on time say so let's just right click on this go to show help you've got it here so go to parameters and then you've got a really good kind of explanation of each one of these features here so frames per second the frame rate Start start the animation as defined in the project settings. So if we trim this, that will give us that frame that is cropped to. Um, so the start and end of that. Um, yeah, loop start. Yeah, so like I said, if if we trim this in, we've got the loop start, loop end. So end of the preview area, start the preview area. So now we've covered that, we'll just kind of jump into um, into Python. So we'll just uh, ignore what's going on here. Um, we don't, we're not going to play the timeline. We're just going to execute this. So it doesn't matter about deactivating this at this point. So let's just create a, a new null. Um, go to tags, go to scripting, Python, and just start creating this. So what we need to do is just create a list initially because we'll have one list um, but it'll have like two dimensions to it but it's still under the same name so let's just declare list right, actually let's not use list let's use um, we'll just use array just because it's kind of coming up as some kind of um, 
syntax variable in Python. So, um, so array. Ray equals, I'm going to declare it there. And I'm going to go for A in X range, open brackets. Um, and then this, so we're going to be looping several times. So let's just, let's just draw this out to work out what we need to do. So we need to create um, four vectors. So for a matrix, we have four vectors. So we have, you know, we've got one, sorry, one, two, three, four. So that means for this four, first four loop, we need to um, loop this four times to create each one of these. Now inside each one of these loops, we need to loop three times just because we got three separate values um, in each one of these. So we've got this for the offset, vector one, vector two, and vector three. So for the first one, we're gonna do four times, which actually, because it starts at zero, will be three and then indent this and we'll put array array um, dot append and then in brackets we want to pop in this so this this adds um, a second list um, into the into the first list, and then if we just print array here, which is not at this level because it'll be executed in the loop. So we'll just go back, print array, um, and just execute this. We need to put like a colon on the end of this. Um, execute, delete this. So we've got an error here, oh, append, we spelled it wrong, so we just need to put two p's in, execute. So you can see, we've got the first list, which is contained with the brackets, and then we've got the three, sep three separate lists inside this. So, actually we want, we want four lists, so we'll just change this to four, so it must read from one to four. Yeah, so we've got four different um, list slots, secondary um, lists in here. So now, now we've got that working, let's go down and we'll just create a second four. So four, so we want to leap using A, we'll use a different letter, we'll use B, um, because it's the kind of second level to this. And then put in X range. And then in this one, we want to do three loops. Pop it down again. We need to put the code on the end to pop it down. Um, and again, put array dot append. And then inside here, we don't need any brackets. All we want to do is just pop in a value. So we'll put zero for now. And then just execute this. Okay, so it's kind of kind of working. You can see it's placing these in the in the wrong space, um, just because it's not it, when it's looping around on the second version. Uh, on the second loop, it's not populating them in each one because it doesn't actually know which one to put it in. So when we're looking at an array, we're just appending a load of zeros into this. So we're creating, so what it's doing here is it's creating or appending um, these brackets here. 
um, and then it's it's essentially adding a load of zeros so it's looping this three times going back up to the top creating the brackets putting a load of zeros in so what we need to do is to kind of tell it to jump into a different list and then populate the zeros um, on each loop so a for a a will change its value from one to four every time it loops around um, and b will change its value from one to three every time it loops around so if we put in so when when this is looping around three times we need to make sure it's in the correct kind of um, list for this so if in array if we just put brackets in let's put a in here and then execute you can see the correct date is placed in the in the right slot so we've got four now we've got four different vectors we've got a vector here 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 and here um, and for storing information we could directly um, put a matrix um, straight into this list or this two-dimensional list so just to kind of talk cover this again and um, just so you can totally understand what's going on here we've got um, so at the top it puts C4D um, so we're just importing um, C4D kind of module in um, just so we can reference all these commands. Um, we're defining like a function here, which is main, um, which is already here. We've got array, which where we're declaring um, a list called array. And then what we're doing here, and we'll just kind of talk over this is just one loop in particular. So what we're doing is we're creating a list here. So we're creating one single list. So we're appending a list. So we're appending this list here, inside. So at this, so it basically at this point, we've got a list, and we've just popped in a second list in there. And then we, and then we move down here. Um, and now this loops three times. Now this knows which list to look in. So it knows it's the first one because it's because it's the first time. First time. A's been kind of looped, so that'll be a value one. So it's always looking for this one here. Um, and then what I'll do is it'll go through this three times. So I'll go, okay, let's loop this three times and add three values in here. Now, when it goes around to the second um, loop for A, it creates a, it creates a second, you're creating a second, um, well, that should be there, we'll just take that out, creating a second list. Now this list will be two, so now A will be two. So when it loops around the second time, it knows in the array I need to look for two, um, and then I need to append three zeros. So it's looking at two, and it's appending three zeros into this. And it does the same thing when it gets to three. So when it loops around the whole thing again, it goes to three, um, appends new list which is this um, and then with this one it just loops out three times adds three zeros um, and obviously it will do it four times because there's four separate vectors there so this is not I mean if you look at this it's just data there's a load of zeros at the moment um, not too, nothing too interesting but if you want to kind of manipulate um, or add or store, you know, your kind of matrix values and do anything with that, then these are really, really useful. And so this is just a really, really efficient and quick way to um, to declare all of these. Um, you can you can do this kind of manually by kind of declaring your array and just putting all these values in here. But with this, it's, it gives you the option as well because you could have you could initiate this and just have counting value, different values for each one. Um, and it's just really efficient the way it creates it as well. So I hope you found this useful. Um, thanks for watching this. If you have liked, if you have enjoyed the video, please like the video, and um, I'll see you in the next one.